now that we have the user input, we need to decide what to do with that user input. So we kind of need to break it apart into a couple of sections. We need, if we have a problem that's entered like this, we need three different components. We need the first number, we need the operator, and we need the second number. So we're gonna need three different types of variables from that one string. And we can do that very easily. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. We can do that very easily by declaring another variable called values. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna split the string on a space. And what that will do is it'll give us a list of strings that we can go ahead and, and check on. So let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these strings. So we'll say values, zero. I'm gonna duplicate this line a few times, one and two. Now, of course, this is not going to be error proof. If for some reason we do not get enough values in here, we could, you know, crash the program, which we'll see here in a second. If we run this main program, what we'll see here, please enter arithmetic problem one plus two. We'll then see that we have all of the operators now separated. So we have the number one, number two. If we were to do five plus four, we would get those broken apart. But if I only put five in here, we're going to get an index out of bounds exception right here on the 10th line because I'm just pressing, I press five in there, it's split on a string. So it's not finding this and it's saying, hey, there is nothing inside of here. Uh, looks like I probably found a string or, or a new line or something there. So we can't find anything in that regard. So we're gonna go ahead and throw an exception. So this isn't really foolproof, but it does give us uh, the ability to actually start performing our operation. Now, the one that's really important to us right now is actually this first one. And this is because this is what's going to give us our plus, our minus, our multiplication, or our divide operator. And then at that point, we can decide how we want to progress in our application. And so based upon if this is a, you know, if this value is, you know, a minus, is a plus sign, well, then at that point, I want to do add something together. And so it's going to say that's we we're actually doing print line. There we go. If the value is a plus sign, then we're going to want to go ahead and add it together. Uh, otherwise, you know, we can say else if values is you know values one equals equals minus, then we can do something else. So we could continue this path down of else if, and this will work. There's nothing wrong with this. We could do this. This will work. However, it does get a little clunky. This is a perfect opportunity for us to use a when statement. So we can say when values one, so check that value one, and we can say is plus, I wanna do something. So I can say print line, add. When is and is not going to be needed here because we're actually just using it directly against the value. So we'll say plus, and we can say minus. Say print line, subtract. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate these real quick, and then we can go ahead and, of course, we'll say multiply and divide. It'd be pretty easy. And divide. And then for whatever reason, if we don't have something that matches, we might want to say throw legal argument exception. I'm going to say invalid operator. And we'll just go ahead and pass in whatever that value is. So we'll pass in values one. And then that's going to allow us, we'll go ahead and get rid of this down here. This will allow us to actually see and do to something different based upon each one of these, these input types. So let's go ahead and run this program. And we'll put a few of the uh, arithmetic problems in here. So one plus one. So it looks like we have add. So I have one minus four, subtract. We have six times seven, multiply 42 divided by 10 is divide. And let's go ahead and just throw something crazy in there. Let's do like, uh, for example, maybe we want to do powers of, but we haven't implemented it. We could do 10 to the power of five. Boom, we have an exception, invalid operator. And we add the to the power of operator, which is normally used in math inside of programs. So here, our calculator is a simple calculator. It's only gonna process these different types uh, of inputs.
So now let's go ahead and implement each one of these and I'll be right back while I do that so you don't have to see me type. Okay, now we're back. So I've done this very easily. I've taken the first value, I convert it to a double and take the second value and I convert it to a double. I've converted everything to doubles here so we don't lose any precision. Now there's one thing I would like to do that I would like to clean this up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna refactor this and I'm just gonna say extract this into a variable and it's gonna ask me to replace two occurrences because it's occurring two places. So sure, and I'm gonna call this operator just so it reads a little bit better. It's actually saying we can move it into the declaration of the when. And if we were to do that, here's what it would look like. I could just move that into the declaration there. I don't like the way that looks. It looks a little bit, it's too much for me to read. This is a lot easier for me to read, so I'm gonna leave it like that. So I have my operator. And then what I could also say is something like this. I could go ahead and extract this. I could refactor it. I could extract this into a variable. And it does occur four times. So we're, we're repeating ourselves, which could be problematic for updating our code later. So I'm gonna call this LHS for left-hand side. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna go ahead and extract a variable. We're gonna call this right-hand side, RHS, for all four occurrences. So now we have our, we have our input and we've got our operator, our left-hand side, and our right-hand side, and then this is pretty easy to see. So when the operator is a plus sign, we're gonna go ahead and print out the, we're gonna convert all these to doubles and say, all right, so we don't lose any precision, which can happen sometimes in multiplication and division, depending upon what you're doing. And then we're gonna go ahead and actually perform the operation. And then what we're gonna do at that point in time is we're gonna go ahead and print that value, and then we're gonna go ahead and do a read line. So let's go ahead and run this to see what happens. So I've entered an arithmetic problem, one plus one. We got two, we got two times five. And we see we got an index right out of array exception. And that's because we didn't put a space there. So we do have a couple, some input problems that we possibly do need to process. So let's go ahead and see if we can get each one of these to run accordingly. So we already did a plus. Let's go ahead and do a uh, subtraction. One minus six. Okay, that makes sense. Eight times seven, 56. Let's do 60 divided by 10, six. So all that makes sense. So our application does work now. We now have a application, which is a simple calculator that shows us how to do adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing.